And that, dear patron, is the initiator of the Earth Talks. The reason why we're all here tonight, Angie Ratai. How are you doing, Angie? Well, what <laughs> adrenaline can do to a body is incredible. I've had two very long days and I feel that uh, my energy level is still quite satisfactory due to my adrenaline output, which is tremendous. But one year ago, during the last Earth Talks, I think if I had had a wish for the 10th Earth Talks one year ago, the wish would have been that we have uh, this inaugural speech by Alexander van der Bellen uh, in this capacity as a president because a year ago we were still in the runoff election so to have the president uh, as an opening speaker this is really great dear president I think what we can say if you're a patron, of course, if we misbehave, then your name is on the program. So we are going to try to make this a wonderful evening, and we'll carry on. And now, let's take a seat. I do assume that Angie Ratai would be very happy about the money, about you joining in the side events. Huge efforts taken here, Angie, in the last 10 years. You've been so crazy dedicating every single minute and second of your time to organize the Earth Talks. 130 guests attended the first Earth Talks. Now things have developed a bit. You are also successfully working as a graphical designer, being awarded a great many prizes for your work as well. Did you expect that after 10 years you'd be sitting on the sofa here facing so many people when you organized the first event? By no means, no way. Ten years ago, I opened Pandora's box, not exactly knowing what I was doing. In the framework of my diploma project, I wanted to make sure that many people I met in the course of the project, I wanted to bring together from civil society who, not all, who were not activists that time, who said, we want to do something, maybe we can develop some projects together, could you give me some advice? And for that, the Earth Talks were founded in summer 2008. I came up with the idea and Freda actually was the first speaker for the Earth Talks. It was exactly the same team. Andre, the project manager, was on board. Sasa Stanovic, the catering manager, and myself. And this remained the same until this very day. I think this is the quality of the Earth Talks and I'm very happy that uh, people like the idea and that we have found a nice niche for our event. When someone meets you right before the Earth Talks, asking you how are you feeling, you say, oh, well, the Earth Talks, we've sent out the invites. You are absolutely fulfilled with this task. You have lots of motivation, of passion, is that right? You raise your hand twice. Well, only recently did I have a talk with Matthias von Zimtfilm. He said that he has never ever met anyone talking so fast. I always try to save money. Time. Well, I think I'm easily motivated. That's true. Probably because I'm a very imaginative person. I'm a very creative woman. That's why I studied design. And due to the education by my parents for cost reasons, but also because of our passion, we spent our holidays in the Tyrolean mountains. And I used every moment I had to spare to spend in nature. And when I see so many people, I can see each and every one of you as multipliers. Greg Craven, at our second Earth Talks back then in the Natural Historical Museum, said, be the virus, and he gave an example, saying, if the 900 people sitting here only inspire another five, bringing about a trifle change in their lives, when you do your math, it's 4,500 people that tomorrow may already bring about a change because of the snowballing effect. That's what keeps me motivated. That's uh, what I see first and foremost. I don't think, oh, we are so small, we can't change anything anyway. What with my 
flourishing imagination, I think about is what we can change, being so many of us. Who or what inspired you? Andrea just uh, told us where he started from, what his first hour was, a drastic picture. What was your trigger, the moment when you said, this is what I want to do? Like with Andrea, and I think that's what we need, as Andrea put forward, we need love and anger, the ambivalence, the opposition. It was a healthy shock for me, as I would like to put it. We saw it in one of the videos, it's the Chernobyl experience when I was aged eight, and then the Axon Valdez problem. You wanted to say thank you some, to someone. Thank you very much for reminding me. That's true. It's always difficult to say thank you to everyone. Our long-term partner, the ministry for an Austria worth living in, quite a long title I would like to thank, and Peter Ivanovich, who unfortunately can't be with us today because they've been supporting us for all these years, they believe in us. We are the young, wild ones for them when we stumble in sharing our ideas with them. It's really great to be supported by them. Thank you for doing so.